Hey everyone, I'm Rafa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the five habits to unlearn when you go from consulting to the world of startup. I used to be a management consultant myself and I thought I knew so much and boy, I was wrong. So today I'm going to share with you the things that I had to unlearn as I made the transition from management consultant to startup founder. Let's go. Number one, don't be perfect. Clients like perfection, but people like authenticity. So you don't have to impress anyone and you don't have to get everything right because in truth, no one ever has. Back at my firm, they made a big thing of building your personal brand. So I thought I had to dress like I was going on The Apprentice every single day. And that could have been wronger because after starting up my own company, I realized that it's not about the pretenses. In fact, you can make it even worse by dressing up too much. It just looks like you're overcompensating for something that you don't have. The best conversations I have with so-called important people, such as investors, was when I was actually quite casual. And, and really, I didn't even have to over-prepare for those conversations. Genuinely, I once reached out to an investor and I said, hey, I haven't got everything uh, you know, thought through yet, but I saw that you had experience from your previous investments in X and Y. Can I pick your brain really quickly on this thing I'm trying to build? And that ended up being genuinely one of the best interactions I've had. And I got to know them for the many years to come and even ended up pitching to them as a potential investor when I did come to raising my first round. So in general, I found it to be much better to be imperfect and yourself rather than try and reverse engineer this personal brand that you're supposed to be building. And what is a good approach that has worked for myself is to actually just listen to who I am a little bit more, find out the bits of myself that I like and then exaggerate those bits instead. Being your true and authentic self is your best personal brand. Number two, stop seeking permission. Now remember, when you start your company, you don't have a director or a partner to look over your shoulders anymore. You are the boss. When I first started out, it was quite a confusing thing because I kept thinking I had to ask someone whether I'm allowed to do something or whether something was good enough until I went to do it. And I learned that in fact, no, all I had to do was just do it. Once I went into a shop, I was selling to shops at one point, uh, a piece of tech I wanted them to adopt. And I got so nervous. I was like, you know, who am I supposed to talk to? Am I like, am I supposed to talk to the manager or, or maybe I should tell the sales assistant to then like refer me to the manager. All of that was just unnecessary worrying. So my very first conversation ended up with me being in the shop for an hour and a half, trying out clothes, pretending I was a customer, trying to woo the sales assistant before eventually actually asking them whether or not I could speak with someone in charge. Um, and by the, you know, by the time I'd done five or six of those, I learned better and I went, okay, this is gonna be a complete waste of time if I have to spend an hour and a half every time. So I literally just went straight up to the counter and said, can I please speak to your manager? And that just became so much easier. And when I got to the manager, I said like, are you in charge of making decisions around here? Because this is what I wanna do. So in short, stop seeking permission to, to get stuff done. There's way more examples too, because sometimes you may be looking at things which are sort of on the borderline of permissibility. But I think as an entrepreneur, it's your job to sort of test and push the boundaries of permissibility. There are many, many naughty things that I've done when I started my company, some of which I maybe shouldn't talk about here. But once I uh, decided to hand out flyers as a trial for customer acquisition, and I did it at locations I wasn't really supposed to. One was a sort of large scale shopping center where you normally have to apply for a permit to, to do that kind of stuff. And the other one was a hotel. I literally went up and down every single floor in the hotel and started flyering, which is extremely naughty. I did get caught on CCTV that time and the guy came up to the sixth floor, whichever floor I was on, and then booted me out of the hotel. So yeah, you can get told off sometimes, but at least it makes for a good story, right? I want to add that you should never, ever, ever do anything illegal, obviously. Speaking of permission, all of you guys have my full and total permission to subscribe to my channel. So if you haven't done so already, give the thumbs up below a tap and also hit the bell icon to subscribe to my channel for more content related to startups. Number three, questions, not answers. The success of an early stage startup is limited by the rate of learning, not by how expert you are already in a certain field. So rather than trying to focus on things that you already know, what's even more important is to discover the many, many, many things that you have not yet learned about your field. 
This can lead you to develop a pretty interesting take on a certain industry, which can then lead to many, many more opportunities down the line for clients, for partnerships, and for investment. So let's say I'm trying to build a banking app. Rather than try and become the preeminent expert of banking, kind of hard given the HSBCs and the Barclays out there, what I could do instead is to keep asking questions that allow me to develop an interesting angle of attack. So for example, I might go, what's an underserved segment of the market? 16 to 18 year olds? People who are uni students, let's say? Or immigrants? Okay, got it. And what services do these people need? Oh, well, if you're a student, you have to pay off student loans, right? Oh, I got it. So how about a banking app that lets these uni students pay off their personal loans with this bank account and then we develop lifelong clients? Oh shit, this is pretty good. Maybe I should go and do that instead. Uh, so you see, asking the right questions is far more important than having the right answers. Number four, your slides can be a little bit ugly. As a consultant, I was trained to have everything perfectly aligned, all font sizes perfectly made, all I's dotted and all T's crossed. In reality, this is actually less useful of a thing to do because when I was doing this as a consultant, it turned out that the obsession sometimes prevented me from just focusing on the big picture and the narrative I was trying to present. And at worst, it would even tunnel vision me, preventing me from focusing on other important parts of what I'm trying to say. So when building out your first pitch deck, what I would say, it's far more important to focus on the points you're trying to get across, the structure of what you're trying to say, rather than the presentation and the visual aspects of it. So forget all the two diagrams, forget all the fancy circular radial diagrams, the two by twos you've been trained on. What's much more important is to just get the points solidly onto a slide. Now, that's not to say that we can't make it look nice. There are simple hacks to make something that is quite minimalistic, but also quite aesthetically pleasing at the same time. Without going into too much detail, the three things I would focus on here is A, the use of iconography, B, the use of typography, and C, color. These three elements give you enough permutations to get a clear hierarchy of information across without polluting the slide too much and without complicating the design aspect of it too much. If you're looking for inspiration on good looking slides that you can just plug and play, I would go to Canva, which has plenty of amazing slide templates for you to borrow. Number five, withholding information from others. One trick I found many people using in the world of consulting to get ahead of others is by holding on to information so that other people can't get it. And I'm completely guilty of doing this myself too. Once to get first dibs on the next big project, I charmed my way into these pipeline calls. And these pipeline calls were weekly meetings where partners of the firm would get together and discuss what projects were being sold, what the status was, what it's about, and who was in charge of it. And this is crucial information because by having first-hand access to this before any other analyst saw it, I could then approach the right partner and sort of pitch myself to them and hopefully get onto, this, onto these projects, right? And having access to such powerful information, did I share any of it with other federal analysts? No, I didn't. Because why would I? This is the thing that could unlock my career and let me get ahead, right? Now, in the world of startup, it's a completely different thing. And this is actually one of the biggest reasons that I much prefer the world of startup to the world of consulting. In the world of startups, everyone knows that a rising tide floats all boats. So it's not by concealing, hiding, occluding others that you get ahead. It's actually by sharing and building connections so that everyone can win together. So I'd really, really, really recommend anyone coming from a consulting-based background to shed any gut instinct or habit that you might have of holding on to particular bits of information and instead to share them with people. Meet up with people, tell them about interesting things about your sector, hear about their interesting things from their sector. If you're in the same sector, even better, jam over the bits of information that you've got and you'll find that you'll make many multiples over what you've gained, over what you're hiding. And that's it. Thank you so much, guys, for making it to the end of this video. These are the five lessons that I had to unlearn going from the world of consulting into a startup. And I hope this was helpful for you guys. See you next time.